Well, this is going to be part three of uh, working on this uh, GE 1937 model E50 radio. And here come my little buddy again. He's on the arm of my chair. All right, come on, Chubbs. Come over this way. Well, come on, here. Did you want to come over here? Well, come on. Here. No, come here. Now today, I'm going to be talking metal on you. No! Stop. Come here. Say hi. He's saying hi from the room. No. All right, you can go play with the kitty. Go play with the kitty. Well, go play with the kitty then. Go on. Go on. Go play with the kitty. Bye bye. Sorry about that. He's being noisy today. Okay. I don't know why, but he, <laughs> he just, just wanted to bark. Uh, well, I haven't been working on this. Actually, I haven't been on, made a, a video in about, gee, 10 days. Uh, but I've uh, been going to my chemotherapy the last three days. Uh, and uh, basically, um, after this one finally got finished today, I got my bone marrow uh, booster shot that uh, helps me produce more white cells. And after my last uh, blood test was done, uh, I saw my oncologist before I went for the other session. He says, all of your, all the, uh, the, the uh, non-normal uh, readings we we're getting, they're going towards normal. And uh, I mean, I had some high, some low, and he said, everything is starting to come back to where it's supposed to be. So um, he says, <laughs> He said, it's a classic. He said, it's working perfectly. He said, it's working the way it's supposed to. Uh, there's no surprises. Uh, looks like everything's going to be cleared up by June. Um, and then he said, then we just check it every so often to make sure uh, nothing's coming back. But he said, uh, it looks like uh, you'll be clear of the cancer cells by, uh, actually probably before June, but we want to make sure we get two more months in. So I got to go in for May and June. And uh, he said, yeah, for sure. He said, June will be the last time we have to go in. So, in fact, my last appointment, it was just before Ron has to take off the Azores again. Because he's been taking me to my appointments. But, um, so, yeah, that was good news, finally. Uh, I never realized how bad off I was until I started doing stuff around the house. I said, don't God, I can <laughs> do more than I did before. So I never realized, actually, it was uh, slowing me down. But uh, anyway, uh, I did a lot more work on this thing. Uh, the parts are kind of in there, kind of messed up anyway. So uh, let me see. Oh, I'm try to get this camera moved over. Let's see what we can do here. Let's see. Tilt down. I gotta do it so I can get in there. Uh, let's see. All right. The area I'm work. Actually, what I'm gonna do here, I guess. First, I can move the chair away, but I can't do any work that way. Um, okay. Well, anyway, uh, if you look. What I've done is a lot of the wires that were scrambled up and too long and everything else, besides replacing parts, uh, the wiring, I've had to replace some of that, uh, parts and wiring, I still got to go for more. Uh, what it gets me is I'm going to replace a uh, capacitor with this one right here. And this one's way over here. Let me see. Yeah. This big one back here in the back. It's exactly the same as this. It's a 0.25 microfarad at 200 volts. That's the difference between then and now. <laughs> That's what's going to be going in there. But uh, 
if you look all the other parts I've gotten in there they had to go underneath whatever actually when I was soldering here I didn't notice that the wire had come loose from this resistor so I figured well as I go along I just make sure the radio is still working so I'll still plug it in and turn it on and it wasn't working I said and I noticed shoot the thing and I thought it snapped but actually it when I was soldering it, it popped out. I didn't notice it. Sure enough, I popped it down, started working. So anyway, I soldered it back in place. Everything's fine. Um, anywhere I could get into, I would put uh, uh, shrink wrap on, like even these bare wires up here. I desoldered those and put shrink wrap on them so that they wouldn't short out. Because there was just bare, all bare wires up in the top. Uh, and it wasn't all ground, so I figured, well, shoot, that's kind of dumb. So I worked on those too. So now I got to take care of this one right here. So anyway, I'll be back in a minute after I change that one. Uh, and I'll be right back. Hold on. Well, here we are. It doesn't take long to do a decent job if you know what you're doing anyway. Uh, and so that's what was in there before. <laughs> It's kind of goofy, but uh, yeah, same thing. That's the problem. It just back then, that's the best they could do for making a cap that would work on these things, and they they worked for years. But uh, with modern technology, we've shrunk everything down. So, but yeah, so we're getting going right along here. Um, actually, over where the transformer is, all those wires. Actually, these are all cloth wires. And nothing was bare or anything. These are all still really just because uh, I'm pretty sure this thing got replaced back in the 50s or something like that. But because uh, it is, uh, I did not paint this. I mean, this thing is perfect, really. The transformer is top and bottom. So uh, I knew it was replaced. But other than that, all the other parts are the same. And these even dog bones. Uh, just by taking one end off and getting it out of the circuit and testing it. I finally figured out how to read the color code in these dumb things. I mean, I've seen them before, but I never really uh, uh, figured out what the color code was. I had to get a take them off and get a meter on them and see what they look like and see what they were. And then, But yeah, you've got to figure, you got to... It's the, the body and then there's a dot in the middle and the one on the other end. So you've got three different colors. So that gives you actually what your what the ohm reading is going to be. So, but uh, yeah, I never really knew how to <laughs> read those before. Or the domino caps, really. That was a, another one too, because sometimes you can't even see the colors on them. Like in this case here, it's orange, orange, blue on this one. So you know, it's uh, you know I should use my laser pointer, you know, when I do stuff. I guess I have one, and <laughs> definitely you can see. Uh, like that one there, there's a cap. And then these dog bone resistors, it's from calling those anyway. But uh, the only problem you have on these dog bones is after all these years, some of them, like this one right here, you can't even really tell what the color is. Looks like it's all brown, but uh, it's not. Uh, this one over here, well, it's brown, but I can't see the underside, so it's probably got the dot and whatever underneath. So, And you need to know, know what all three of those colors are. And uh, then you have the gold, maybe gold or silver tolerance for the, uh, whether they're 5 or 10%, whatever they are. But, uh, yeah, so it's moving slow still. Um, and this switch up here, it was frozen before. Now it's, it's loosened up. Um, I used good old deoxid on it. But it's just switching from, uh, well, the big ones for the broadcast band. And then the small ones for like, eh, the short wave bands like the police or whatever they had this thing set up for, which are really not used anymore. I mean, those frequencies there have all changed. Um, so, yeah, it's like one of those deals where yeah, as years go on, a lot of stuff changes. So, and you got to figure this was back in 1937, and, and I guess it was commonplace to have those... Uh, uh, stations there but not anymore so anyway that's what we're up to and uh, that's what's been going on 
So we'll talk to you guys later.